the app store in a browser. How to save thousands on CI? Why is Homebrew suddenly so much faster? And how to actually fix your SwiftUI performance? We are breaking down all the biggest news from the world of iOS and macOS development right now. My name is Alexander Bilous. I'm an engineer at Setup. And let's get into it. The App Store is now available right in your browser. Yep, Apple just dropped a full web version of Marketplace. It covers all the platforms – macOS, iOS, watchOS, visionOS, and even tvOS. It definitely feels like Apple is gearing up for something new. And that's where the story should have ended. But of course, there is a catch. Developers immediately started digging around to see how this new web app store was built. And oh boy, did they find something. A GitHub repo popped up with the actual source code for the app's application. How did that happen? Well, it looks like it was just a bad build config. But the fact remains, the project source map was publicly available. Which means a chunk of the code, internal developer comments, the app structure, and even its list of used dependencies. It all leaked. Naturally, this whole public source map soon ignited a firestorm on Reddit. On one side, you had the developers who were furious, saying security first, always. On the other side, you had folks who were honestly kinda happy about the easier debugging with the public source map. Apple, however, moved at lightning speed. First, the public source maps vanished from the App Store page. Then, the company went on the cleanup spree, taking down the public GitHub repos and all their forks. We are talking over 8000 repositories related to the web app store that got wiped. But the internet never forgets, does it? Next up, iOS app performance. Apple just dropped a super useful talk covering liquid glass and foundation models. But the real headliner, of course, was Swift UI performance. Apple's engineers did a deep dive on how to profile your UI, especially with the new SwiftUI instrument. The entire talk basically rests on the three key pillars. Pillar number one, data flow optimization. Sounds simple, right? Well, in practice, this can mean making some major changes in your project structure. The main takeaway is this. It's time to get really clear on what's the difference between state and observable. The engineer said state is totally fine if you just have one or two components bound to it. But observable is a no-brainer choice when you have multiple views all reading and writing that same data. Pillar number two, working with closures. So what's the deal here? The problem is that closures are hard to compare. And that leads to a ton of unnecessary re-renders of your entire view. How do you fix it? First, try to initialize and store the results of your view builder closures. Second, if you're stuck using them, just try to minimize the number of changes in the parent component. By the way, cause and effects graph in instruments is a huge help for spotting this. And pillar number three. This one is our collective pain point. It's an updating state and environment during the hot pass. Here's the classic example. You're tracking a scroll view position and writing it directly to state. What happens? You guessed it. Constant body updates and re-renders for all the child views. Apple's recommendation isolate that state. Make sure it affects as few components as possible. It's a similar story with the environment. Changing an environment value updates every single view that reads this. And even if the body re-renders get skipped, that check is not free. The solution puts the observable type inside the environment and then mutate the state there. Whoa, that is a lot of new info. Honestly, I feel like I need to refactor a project right now. Have you ever actually done the math on what your CI is costing you? We can't imagine modern development without it, but it always brings up two questions. How much should it cost? And how can you pay less? Well, developer Jeff Mercoin ran his own investigation into the CI CD market to find the best deal. Let's look at his setup. The app build takes up to 10 minutes, and tests take another 4 to 7. And of course, this all runs on every single pull request. The bottom line? He was burning through an estimated 28,000 minutes a month. So, Jeff went and priced out all the big players. GitHub, CircleCI, Xcode Cloud, Bitrise, and the rest. He found it all boils down to three main business models. First, the classic paper minute model. 
second, a fixed monthly fee, but with a limit on concurrent builds. And third, a fixed fee to a rent device, like a Mac Mini. And the price difference? It's insane. The paper minute plan clocked in at 4000 a month. The fixed plan? Just a few hundred bucks. Now, Jeff could have just stopped at Mac Stadium, which already offered huge saving. But he took it one step further. He calculated that owning the hardware is way cheaper than renting it, especially in the long run. So he decided to self-host his CI agents. The result? He's saving thousands of dollars every single month. That's just incredible. The Homebrew Package Manager just dropped a new major version, 5.0. So let's do a quick rundown on what's under the hood. First up, the new brew officially adds support for Linux, ARM64 and Arch64. This used to kinda work, but it was purely in experimental mode. And probably the biggest headline for everyone, Homebrew is faster. Parallel downloads are now enabled by default. Finally. Alright, now let's pivot to the key changes for macOS. The big theme here is security. Shipping unsigned binaries is now officially deprecated. Now they are giving everyone a grace period. This will keep working until September 2026. But after that date, Homebrew will completely disable its gatekeeper bypass. Also getting deprecated are the flags that help you bypass the system quarantine. All mentions of them have been scrapped from the documentation. And what's a big release without a roadmap? The team rolled out a whole deprecation schedule. Next fall, Homebrew will stop supporting macOS 10.15 Catalina. Then, in the fall of 2027, it's macOS 18 Big Sur turn. And here's the real kicker, potentially in 2027, Homebrew might say goodbye to the Intel altogether. Support for the X8664 could be dropped completely. You can never have too much Swift news. The official Swift.org portal is launching a new monthly digest. The authors are promising to share insights, updates from the working groups, and a roundup of all the biggest changes in the ecosystem. The first pilot issue for October is already out. So what's inside? First up, the server-side Swift conference took place earlier in the month. All the talks on Swift performance, Vapor, and observability are already up on YouTube for you to watch. Second, some huge community updates. And there are three big ones here. The official release of the Android SDK for Swift is out. Yep, you hear that right. There is now an official Swift extension for VS Code. And finally, a new working group has been formed to focus on the Swift build and Swift PM. The digest also covers new package releases and breaks down the latest Swift evolution proposals. We'll have links to all the news, including the new digest, right down in the description. And to wrap things up, I've got a recommendation for you. I just watched this interview and I was completely hooked. Chris Lattner, Yes, that Chris Slatner, the creator of LLVVM and Swift, sat down with the pragmatic engineer. He talked about his early days at Apple and how LLVVM managed to completely kick JCC to the curb in just five years. And of course, they dove deep into Swift. Chris shared the whole origin story, from how it started as a secret nights and weekends project, all the way to its massive public launch. But it's not just a Swift interview. Lattner also talks about his time at Google and what he's focused on right now, his new language, Mojo. Look, I'm not going to spoil it anymore. It's absolute must-watch. That's all news for today. Subscribe to get more iOS and macOS engineering news next month. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.